Hello everyone, Jenna Elizabeth Johnson here and I'm putting uh, together a video today for those of you who send me questions and messages and emails about pronunciation with regards to terms and names in my book series. Um, I get a lot of those and I do have some pronunciation guides out there in the books on my website, but it's always good to actually hear how things are pronounced. So I'm going to go through and read some of the terms from, I'm going to start out with the Legend, or not the Legend of Ossian, but the Otherworld series. And so here's the Omnibus edition. It's now available. It's been available as an ebook, but also as a paperback. So you can see that. And in the back, I have the pronunciation guide. So I'm going to go over some of the words and terms and names in that series for you. So the first word I'm going to mention is Beltana or Beltine. I've heard it pronounced both ways, and that is uh, one of the four uh, Celtic holidays. And uh, Beltana arrives on May 1st through 2nd, either or depends on really how the moon is going. Um, and it celebrates the arrival of summer. So that's the first term in uh, the other world series for you. Second one is a Kumurig, and most of you who have read the stories know that these are the corpse hounds, the hell hounds that the Morrigan uses kind of as her as her police force in the series. Uh, next is Dolmarin, and I created this word using Dolmen which are the standing stones. You usually have the two standing stones with the tabletop that you see in Celtic nations, such as Ireland, Scotland, places like that, England. And um, in the other world series, I use Dulmarin as gateways between the worlds or in order to get to different places within the other world. The word, the next word after that is Ariad. And Ariad is a term for someone who is Phaeloran and who is considered an outcast among their own kind. So Ariad, in the story Ariad, which tells three scenes from Phaeloran from Kate's perspective, he is labeled Ariad by the Morrigan and others because he is sort of an outcast. And I don't want to give away too much for those of you who haven't read it, so I won't say much more. Those of you who have, know, know why. Um, Next word is Ile, and that is the Phaeloran term for the other world. They call it Ile, uh, as well as the other world. Uh, the next term after that is Phaela, and the Phaela are kind of these reanimated dead creatures that the Morrigan uses her dark magic, and really anyone using dark magic and with enough power and know how can create Phaela. And they are kind of like these zombie creatures that she uses as her army. And sometimes they get it out of hand and they end up in our world. And it causes problems. Uh, next term is Phaeloran. And Phaeloran, of course, is the name for those those immortals who are from the other world. And it is also the title of the first book, Phaeloran. Next term is Gesh. And that is a Celtic term. It's used throughout Celtic mythology and legends. A Gesh is sort of a taboo or a curse that can be placed on someone. And the plural is Gesha. Next word is Galleon, um, another name for one of the books in the series, Cade's second book. Um, but Galleon means a heart warrior, so someone who is a heart warrior is Galleon. After that is Glamour, and most of us know about Glamour from Hollywood and other places in our modern culture. But Glamour is a term usually used for describing the power that the Fae have, so it's kind of like otherworldly magic. Imbolg is the term after that. Imbolg is another Celtic festival. It's celebrated on February 1st through 2nd, and it celebrates the arrival of spring. Lake Ol is a location. It's the biggest lake kind of in the middle of Ile, and that's I just wanted to add that in there so you knew how to pronounce that. Um, it totally exists in my imagination. It doesn't really exist anywhere. Um, Lorenin is the next term after that. Another name of a book, but it's also the name for someone who is part immortal, part mortal. So someone who has Phaeloran blood, but they are not pure Phaeloran. And it is also the title of Robin's first book, which is an offshoot of the Other World series. You could read it alone, or it's best if you've read the first three books before picking up Lorenin. Um, next term is Luathara, another word I invented just for the Other World series, and it is the name of Cade's castle and the, the lands that surround uh, the castle. After that is Lugnasad, which is a harvest festival, uh, a, one of the four Celtic uh, festivals, and it celebrates Lug, and it's generally celebrated August 1st or August 2nd, so we just had Lugnasad, so hopefully you had a great time and did something harvesty on that day. The term that I included next was Puka, and a Puka is an otherworldly creature. It is something that exists in Celtic myth and legend. There are different takes on the Puka. Um, a lot of times I see it depicted as kind of a water horse that will attack you or trick you. 
So it looks like a horse. The one that I found when I was searching for a kind of a way to imagine it um, was of kind of a goat man, and that's how I describe it in the Other World series. I thought that image was pretty creepy, and I thought it would be a great kind of ally of the Morrigan to have this creepy puka looking creature. So a puka is an otherworldly creature that already existed before I wrote the series. After puka is Riastrad. And in the series, um, I use it. Again, I don't want to give away too much. Those of you who have read it know. But Riastrad is also called Warp Spasm or Battle Fury. So a warrior who really gets into battle might go through Warp Spasm and become even greater. So kind of think, think of it as the Hulk kind of losing his cool and just destroying things. Uh, Samhain, uh, again, should be pretty familiar with this one if you've read the series. Um, if you know anything about Celtic history, culture, it is celebrated November 1st or 2nd, and it starts the dark half of the year. It's the Morrigan's Festival as well as Dawn's, and we get a lot of our Halloween traditions from the celebration of Samhain, from what happens on Samhain. A spirit guide, um, don't really need this for pronunciation, but it's a nice term to kind of explain how I use these animals in the Otherworld series. Any animal in real Celtic myth and legend, um, any animal that has, is white with red ears is typically an animal that's from the other world. And I didn't want, when I first wrote this series, I didn't want all the animals to look like that. I thought it'd be kind of boring. So I thought, well, I'll make the white ones with red ears special. And so I made them spirit guides. And the spirit guides are the animals that are connected to their owner or their, their partner. So it's kind of like, think of it as a familiar. And Cade has a spirit guide and that's Fergus. And, um, He's a great big white wolfhound, and so they can speak mind to mind, so they're connected to each other. And that, that's what a spirit guide is. And then a couple more, the Weald, which is the huge forest on the western end of the other world, and that's where Kate's sister Enora lives, where the Wildren live. So I wanted to give it a name, and the Weald sounded like a really neat name for that. And then last but not least is Twigrin, and these are the little kind of stick creatures that I invented that live in the wheel and they live in wild places of the other world and Megan takes a liking to them and I really wish we had these in our world because they're pretty cute but I made that up because I I think stick ins insects are pretty neat so I thought oh, why not stick people and I put those in the other world series and so those are all the terms that I have right now for you that are in again the omnibus edition and they're in the stories if I missed anything, feel free to send me an email at authorjejohnson at gmail.com and you are always welcome to send any questions you have for me. I try to answer them, get back to you as quickly as I can. You can also follow me on Facebook, Author J. E. Johnson. If you do a search, then you should be able to find me very easily. Um, my website is www.jennaelizabethjohnson.com and you can find all my links through there, but I'm on Pinterest. I'm on, again, Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on all those places, I'm blanking out here. Oh, Instagram as well, so if you just do a search for author J.E. Johnson, you can find me pretty easily. And I'm also on Wattpad, and some of my stories are free to read on Wattpad, so do check those out. Again, search author J.E. Johnson, you should be able to find me. All right, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped you out, and as always, happy reading. Goodbye. <laughs>